Okay, so let's go back to a couple of adaptations and strategies that we can utilize with this. Graphic organizers are good for kids. We know that. And for kids who think in pictures, kids who are helped by visuals, kids who need information chunked, that's a really good use of time for kids. Um, one problem that we run into with graphic organizers is that if you use a different graphic organizer every time, then kids get confused. And it's not as meaningful. But if you adopt something like this claims evidence and reasoning piece, or perhaps you use thinking maps in your classrooms, if you use a graphic organizer that is a similar graphic organizer every time or the same every time, that is really helpful for our students because then that allows them to make their thinking concrete, their words concrete, and our real goal is to make academic language concrete for students. And so that really is the goal of that. Um, other things that you can do. When we look at persuasive writing, and with this essay, uh, Let There Be Dark, it's about light pollution. And the author uh, conveys arguments uh, as to why dark is beautiful, dark is valuable, um, how light can be bad for our bodies, how too much light um, can be a real problem. And so one of the things that we use uh, with students that can be very helpful is to say to them, if you're going to look at persuasive writing, look for the big five. Do you see the big five? And in these cases, the big five, uh, the first one are experts or big names, depending on the level of students that you're teaching or their familiarity. Uh, in this essay, um, our author takes a look at the World Health Organization, the American Medical Association, and he also references city and town governments. And so those are the experts that are included in his writing. Research is the second piece of the Big Five. And in this essay about darkness, uh, he states that the night shift um, is a probable human carcinogen. He states that sleep disorders have been linked to diabetes, obesity, cardiovascular disease, and depression. So those are the pieces of research within the essay. Logos. So we're looking at logic. Um, and there are a lot of facts and figures that are trying to pull on your logic. And so eight out of 10 children in the US, he talks about that. He talks about 80% of the world's flora being damaged by too much light. 400 species of birds, a 6% increase, uh, and how light is wasted energy, and that equals wasted dollars. So when we're talking to kids about logos, we can talk about facts and figures, but also that we're trying to make a logical argument here. So the author is tapping into your sense of, we don't want waste, we don't want to waste money, and so if we have wasted light, we have wasted dollars. Um, when we take a look at pathos, and we look at the idea of how do I pull? How do I make sure that you agree with me? How are you going to be empathetic to this? How are you going to be sympathetic to this? What can I do emotionally? Um, so we're taking a look at irreplaceable value and that darkness has inspired artists and philosophers. Those are the arguments he's using. Uh, that everyday stargazers are inspired by beauty as well. And then finally, we take a look at ethos and here, the author has tried to establish himself uh, with some credentials about this, um, and he does so a couple of different ways. He uses an anecdote, personal anecdotes are often found in uh, persuasive essays about the lake cabin. Um, he uses his age to try and establish that I've been around for a while, and so I have experience with this. And also the connection to family, that others should uh, connect with me and trust me because I'm involved with children and grandchildren. So those are the big five that we teach kids to look for because then they can argue that the author has used these devices or these pieces of logic in his argument. The other piece to take a look at with persuasive writing are the use of modals to persuade. And this, again, is one of those pieces that you can teach kids to look for the pattern. And so here, did the author say that you should or should not do something? Did the author say that you can or could or could not? Will, would, would not, must and must not. And here's what they're suggesting. Um, the author is trying to persuade you and tell the reader what action or belief is suggested 
or recommended or advised if they're using the words should and should not. We can teach students to say that the author is telling us what is possible by using can, could, or could not. That the author is trying to tell us what is certain will happen, or would happen, or would not happen. And then finally, what is required or necessary if they're using the words must and must not. So those are pieces that you can teach students to take a look at, and they're really easy triggers for persuasive writing. Um, it wouldn't hit what we're trying to do in the same way with the vocabulary because that was about nuances of meaning, where this would be about if you see the signal word, this is the reaction. So, but depending on how your kids remember things, yeah. Anything else? It could be. And when, when in the year do you find out what the genre will be mm -hmm. for that We believe it will be September, September or October. Um, we believe that it will be released prior to the PSAT, which is given in October. They're shooting for October 15 is their date for next year to give it um, in most places around the country. And so far, SAT has been very upfront about we're going to tell you what the prompt is. And so you will know if you're writing about a persuasive argument or a different thing. So we think that will be very early on in the school year. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to turn you back over to Mark.